Okay, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be doing something really cool. We're going to be tackling the Stranger Things intro design. Stranger Things 4 just got announced, so I figured I'd do something really cool with this. So let's head on into the blend file here, and this is the file we're going to be making. This is the animation, so let's just watch it. I would be um, adding the music, but I don't want to get copyright striked, so it's going to be silent. But this is what we will be creating right here, the Stranger Things intro design. So let's just start a new file, hit general, and let's go. So the first thing we're going to do is hit shift A and we're going to add text right here, right there. So right here and in all caps, stranger. Cool. Now what I like to do is go to the text here and just center everything out. Now we need to add the font. So if you just go to the internet and you type in stranger things font free, so if you just type in Stranger Things font free and you just hit the first one right here, just go that and download that font. So this is the one we are going to be using. So just Google Stranger Things font free and we're going to go down here and where it says font, go down and add it to your scene. So right down here. So Stranger Things and then we'll go down and we'll add right here and type in things. So now we have Stranger Things. So I'm just going to hit the tilde key, go to the top, add my camera. So Control Alt Zero, snap it up here. And now we have this. Now, the Stranger Things font is not a solid font. It's actually outlined. Now, the actual intro was probably made in After Effects. And easily in After Effects, you just apply what's called stroke and you get the outlines and you don't get the center. But here in Blender, it's going to be a little bit more uh, complicated to achieve. But it is completely achievable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy right here and we're just going to go to geometry. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here where it says offset and do that. Now I'm going to hit shift D, take another one and bring the offset back down. So now you have two of them. So take this one and extrude him out quite a bit and then take the other one and extrude him out by the amount of extrusion you want the actual font to be. So I think that is a good amount. So now you have these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit B for box select and select both of them. And I'm going to go to edit operator search and type in convert. Convert to mesh. So now both of them are now converted from a text to a mesh. But as you can see, this topology is pretty terrible. And what we're going to be doing is using this one to cut a hole into this one. And you need good topology to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a modifier called Remesh and we'll see how that works. So go to Remesh and now it does that. Click Remove Disconnected Pieces. So now we have that and put the arc tree depth at 9. Alright now apply it. So if I hit Tab now we have nice even faces. So we need even faces to cut holes and things. So do the same thing with this one as well. So now both of them have had the Remesh modifier applied to them. Click the one in the center so click the larger one here and get a boolean modifier and then see this one is called text2 so go into object select text2 and then if we just hide it bam we have our outline so now we'll just go ahead and apply that boolean take text2 and delete it so now you have this so now all you have to do is do the same thing with things all right so now i have booleaned and cut through both parts of the text now we can go ahead and start designing the lighting and stuff. So let's go ahead and in the camera icon, click EV. We're going to be using EV to render this. I'm going to hop over here to the shading tab. Now, one th cool thing about the original font and the text is that the actual text isn't just one like regular emission shader. So I'm going to click the text here and I'm just going to add an emission shader. Go here, plug emission to surface and right here on RGB, I'm going to bring the G and the B back. Now we have red text. Now it's just solid red. The actual design has brighter and darker portions. Now generally you would just plug a color ramp and a noise to the strength, but that doesn't really work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one here, hit Shift D and duplicate it. I'm going to give this one a strength of maybe 40. And we're going to get a mix shader right here. Sorry, here we go. Mix shader, plug it there, plug the emission here. Now, let's start telling it to cut those two up with a color ramp and a noise texture. So, color ramp here. And we get our noise. Plug that there. And if you have the Node Wrangler applied, Control-T, get you a mapping and a texture coordinate and use the object coordinate. 
plug that into the vector. So now we have this, and now we can start. All right, so now I'm going to take the color ramp and just crunch it in here like this. And now you can start seeing, so let me give the strength of, say, about one. And so now you can start seeing that color variation happen within the text. And so now we get some really cool stuff. I'm going to back up here and see, so bring my scale at two. So now we have the brighter and the darker portions of the text, just like in the original in the original Stranger Things design. Now all we have to do is take this one and apply that same material to it. So bring it and apply the material. And boom, we have Stranger Things. Now if you don't see any of this, if you're having a problem, turn on Bloom. You need to make sure Bloom is on. So basically this is the design. Now what I had done is just added a some some smoke here so I'm just quickly show you how to do that add a cube sh uh, control a and apply the scale I'm gonna go to the shading here click new I'm gonna delete the default principle and add a volume the uh, principled volume we're gonna attach this volume to volume give it a density of 0 0.01 now let's add a color ramp a noise texture right here of course add the the mapping texture coordinate and use the object coordinate here and plug the noise texture into the color ramp and we'll plug all of this into emission strength so now it's all white we can bring this white portion here and bring it pretty far down to the gray just like this and then bring our scale pretty far up say about 0 0.6 for now and then we can bring this color ramp in bring this portion in just like this now we start to have some smoke and we can bring it up, bring the detail in, and maybe bring it back down, and then bring the lighter gray portion down some more to reduce how bright that actually is. And now we have the Stranger Things design. Now all we're gonna do, take this guy, and I'm gonna hide him. Now I'm gonna take the camera here. Take the Z here, so I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna take the Z here and bring him in past the text. Maybe bring him up a little bit. So bring him in past the text here. Start a keyframe and I'm gonna give myself about 400 or so frames and then I'm gonna bring him back just like that. Make sure your, your cursor is at the end of your timeline before you hit the keyframe again. Bam. And then now it's coming out. Now this is pretty fast. You wouldn't want it to be that fast, but so now I'm gonna hit rendered, press play and now we have Stranger Things, the Stranger Things intro design. Now my bloom is just really out of control right now. I'm just gonna go back to the EV settings and bring, bring my bloom down a little bit just like that and we'll go back and check it out. So there you go. This is the Stranger Things intro animation. So yeah, that's how you do it. I hope you learned something. I hope you had some fun and thanks for watching.